Sergio Rivera Vazquez is the CEO of Mars Capital and has years of investment experience and he's the latest guest in the Ducas Copy TV Centre. Thank you for joining me in the TV Centre, Sergio. We've spoken a few times at the Geneva Forex event. We all know about the problems in Europe and around the world. So where are you looking to invest at the moment? Well, while uh, Mars has a diversified uh, set of portfolios uh, for uh, each of our clients, highly customised, we uh, have been looking, uh, as of late, at uh, two new uh, alternative investments. Uh, one of them an established asset class, uh, and another one, what I would call an emerging asset class. And those are uh, venture capital and uh, investing in microfinance institutions in emerging markets. Okay, let's start by talking about venture capital. Uh, we all know venture capital, t particularly associated with Silicon Valley and finding the next Facebook or the next big thing. So where will you be concentrating? Well, interestingly, Europe has uh, seen uh, a, 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 a boom period for growth in venture capital investing, but that happened in the uh, early part of uh, last decade, uh, around the year 2000. And since then, uh, uh, commitments to pr investing in, in, in private uh, capital, uh, in, in, in venture capital, have decreased. We see a tremendous uh, funding gap, which represents a big opportunity for us, and uh, we would like to, to, to cover that space. But how broad is this? Is this to any company, any sort of company, or you be targeting specific sectors? Well, at the moment, uh, I personally pr uh, plan to concentrate on uh, co companies in Scandinavia, uh, where you see uh, a very high level of education. And also you see, uh, interestingly, that Scandinavian countries uh, do support and encourage innovation through state-sponsored uh, sort of angel investors and incubators that uh, promote growth in, in, in early stage companies. So at the beginning we're going to be looking at Scandinavia and uh, in, a, in a second stage at the region of the world where I come from, Latin America. Just to mention Scandinavia there, you said, as you rightly said, it's a wealthy part of the world, so do they need another investor like yourself? Well, interestingly, early stage companies uh, do need funds. Uh, typically, uh, uh, somebody who has invented a new concept or come up with a new way of doing things will get uh, the first uh, support from these uh, state-sponsored entities or from an angel investor, friends and family. Um, but then uh, when it comes to the second stage of financing and those needs would be typically between say 2 million euro uh, and could be as large as 10 million euro for somebody with a proven concept and a, and a ready to go to market strategy, uh, that's where we would come in. But isn't this a hard sell for your clients? It's one thing telling them I'm going to buy this in gold or buy these bonds but if you're going to say that I'm going to invest in some guy in Scandinavia who says he's made the next app on the iPhone. Surely they're going to be a lot more reluctant. Well, interestingly, let's let's look at the um, the S and P as a as a as a proxy for what has been going on in equities, and then I'll tell you my my own thoughts about uh, um, the credit markets. Uh, yesterday, the S and P closed at thirteen twenty six or so. Um, if you look at a year ago we were exactly at the same level, very close to 1300. If you look back, if you go back five years, uh, the market had reached uh, the 1500 level. Uh, and uh, so, so if you have been an investor, a buy and hold investor in listed equities, you haven't done so well for the last five years. We look at a minimum of a five year horizon. Or we will offer our investors the opportunity to invest in cutting edge, uh, uh, sort of newly created companies with fresh management that will develop the products of the future. So uh, to me that's uh, a much better bet in equities. Now with regards to credit markets, uh, although of course opportunities exist always in every region and uh, even in, in in, uh, within, within sectors uh, uh, in, in any given country, I would say that you're taking a very uh, uh, big bet. For instance, if you buy uh, long dated paper at this point, if you buy 30 year treasuries, you're essentially writing a free option uh, to somebody else 
to the to the person on the other side, saying that interest rates will not go up uh, for for a sustained period of time. And even though that's exactly what we heard from Mr. Bernanke last night, I believe that uh, there is a good chance that in the next few years interest rates will go up. The 30-year bull market that we've seen in fixed income has come to an end. And to me, again, investing in newly created companies that will provide the global consumer with products and services of the future is, is in a sense, a, a safer uh, way to, to, to approach capital than, than investing in listed stuff. Yeah, and what about microfinance? Because that's also going to involve a lot of traveling, surely, because I guess you're talking about emerging markets. But the other re reservation I would have if I was a big investor is that you're talking microfinance. How much money can you make from microfinance? Well, again, <coughs> interestingly, and it's a very good question. Um, if you look at uh, what uh, commercial banks have been doing in, in the last uh, couple of decades, they've been um, multiplying the services and integrating into a sort of global offering uh, uh, various services that they offer to a, a, a well-to-do clientele, or at least people they thought would have enough income to support increasing patterns of, of consumption. Uh, at the same time, vast areas of the emerging world, and uh, it, it begins to be a phenomenon also in developed markets, have been left out, completely left out by the banks. So people with uh, very low income who have never had uh, a, a checking account, a credit card, and who will actually maybe in their lifetimes not have access to the services traditionally offered by banks, these people represent a, a tremendous market opportunity. Uh, to give you some idea, in Mexico, or the country where I come from, uh, easily half of the population is in this uh, bracket. Uh, if you look at all of Latin America, where microfinance has been growing uh, virtually nonstop for the last 10 years, uh, the numbers could easily go into three, 350 million. So we believe there is a tremendous opportunity not to, to establish a company directly. Uh, we, 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 we let the experts do that. But as in the case of uh, venture capital, we see an opportunity in supporting and helping finance companies that are providing already those services to low-income sectors of population. So it could be microcredits, microtransfers, uh, microinsurance, for instance. And these sectors are just not covered by the banks, which, by the way, uh, are, are not in, 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 in great shape at the moment and are in the leveraging mode. Yeah, this all sounds a bit risky, though, because you're right, there's, there's lots of uh, opportunity there, but it all comes with its risk. Is it a case that you just need one to be successful and you can have lots of small failures? Because you were saying earlier how uh, we had the case of Facebook, that if you got in there very early, then you would have made a lot of money. So is it a case you're just looking for that one uh, golden egg, as it were? Uh, no, we're not. Um, say, if you take a portfolio of uh, 20 investments, and that's probably the size of the, of the portfolio that we are going to look at uh, once we go out and, and raise some, some, some significant funds, um, probably uh, five years from now, a few of those companies, no matter how hard they tried, you tried, will have failed. Uh, uh, probably half of the companies will be doing well in their own business development. And of course, you're looking at a handful of uh, maybe two, three, uh, four, if you're lucky, companies that will bring you uh, returns in excess of, say, 10x or 20x. So, so that is 20 times your original investment. And those are the numbers for the industry. Of course, there is a risk. But we believe that, uh, and I personally strongly believe, that it is a, a, a risk you are well compensated for. Now, with microfinance, it is actually a little, you will be surprised, but it's a little different. Uh, while in uh, the uh, credit markets that we're most familiar with, in housing and consumer credit and so on, the large banks are facing increasing rates of default. In microfinance, for years, in emerging markets, default rates have stayed very constant at, say, 3 to 4 percent. So that means 96 percent of all people uh, uh, do pay their debts. It's a matter of honor. 
uh, it, it, it's very well embedded in, in the local cultures and you can uh, lower your risk by say, making group lending and so on. The interest rates are high, so uh, again, you have a very interesting risk reward profile. Uh, in, in, in microfinance. Okay, well, thank you, Sergio. That was actually really interesting. There'll be more quality interviews just like that one coming here on Dukascopy TV, so make sure you stay tuned. Goodbye for now.